How about this? Today, Tiff, we got the best of British road trip. The all new DBS Superleggera. I know, how about that? They used two names in one. They could have just called it the DBS. Are you it's never happy? Look at one. this car, it's well, wonderful. It's true. It, it is. A lot more aggressive now with that big grille. Yeah, I prefer that's a bit more vantage grille than the DB11. It is a big beast, isn't it? Oh, it looks absolutely but, wonderful. The McLaren, why the McLaren? So that's a sort of sports car against a GT car. Well, oh, that's quite GT and that's quite sports car. So the overlap <laughs> is incredible, really. So it's the best of British test, a comparison. I'll tell you what, do you make mind? I want to drive the old McLaren first. And then I'll end up old testing. McLaren. You're, you're well, getting fussy in your old days. That older. is a phenomenal car, but you're right. This is Get brand spanking new. The latest and greatest from Aston Martin. You go ahead. We'll, we'll swap over anyway. We'll have a. And I like the old autumnal colours. Anyway, you wait and see. Best of British cars means best of British roads as well. Road trip. Only the best for you. Road trip. Road trip. Here we come. Road trip. Follow this Aston. <laughs> it sort of fills my windscreen. It's a chunky thing. I feel like in a much more smaller sports car here in my McLaren. Open road finally with the Aston Martin DBS Super Leggera. Feel quite honoured to be driving this so early actually. Will you slow down? Will you slow down? <laughs> He's grumpy today. He hasn't had his coffee. Okay, no problem. I will slow down for you. You're either all go or all stop, aren't you? You never, you never, you know, you're never just cruising at a gentle pace. Look at him in there, smiling away. That car, that colour's lovely. What about this DBS? I'm still not sure of the colour of your car. It's great. I tell you, when I follow it, it's a big, wide thing. It doesn't feel wide to drive at all, as you will find out, no doubt. Come on then, let's see the back end of it again. What do you think side on? Yeah, nice silhouette, nice silhouette. What about that noise? V12 twin turbo now, but there's some real noise here. I tell you what, these roads are slippery. Every time I open the throttle, it's a bit of a wheel spin and it changes up again. I'm all in comfort modes. Well, I'm in sport. I'm reluctant to put it in sport plus because they are super slippery, these roads. Well, this is such a treat to be out in a McLaren for a road trip. Great visibility. I mean, it's just the mirrors, the air all around you. I spent a lot of time driving this 720 SR on a track day at Silverstone, 160 miles an hour every lap. And on a track, it was amazing. I've now got it all right down in comfort, comfort, everything on. And I have to say, from what I've read before, it's expecting a much more supple ride when it's in comfort. It's still fairly firm. I can feel most of the ripples in this road. Not that I don't like that, I actually like a bit of feel. I want to know the road is there beneath me. One thing I did notice on the track though was the fact these seats don't really hold as much as I'd like. And I don't know whether I can have different seats maybe when I spec my car, but I'd like a bit more waist hugging. I have to say, I think this car looks absolutely wonderful. It's clearly got lots of inspiration from the DB11 as the DB9 did with the previous DBS. And that big wheel at the front just really sets the whole car off. Aston, I say it every single time, are making some of the best looking cars ever at the moment. The power goes down so well in this thing, which is kind of def defies a bit of physics because the roads are super slippery. They're 725 horsepower and rear wheel drive only, but I'm not gonna complain. Of course, while I'm quite happy to cruise along on public roads with everything set to comfort, well, I drove a car on, a, on the track Silverstone circuit doing demo laps. I obviously wanted to turn the traction control off, but it's got this um, variable drift control system. But I don't want a variable drift control. I couldn't set it anyway, it's so complicated to make it work. I just wanted to switch it off or on. But the McLaren, of course, it hasn't got a standard differential. It's got this sort of four-wheel computerized stability control system, which is a bit difficult to set. Although it says you can go variable drift and you have to press ESC or DYN to off, you press it and it doesn't go off. 
and I know if I'm taught how to do it, it'll be easy, but until that moment, I just used to find traction off by potluck. It's got a very complicated computerized set of settings. I just put it back to comfort and cruise. I'm on a road trip. Now I'd love to talk to you about the interior, but I'll be honest, I can't stop doing this. Knocking it down a couple of gears and then just... <laughs> I love the sound of this engine. It's a twin turbo, but it sounds absolutely phenomenal inside and outside the car as well. Looking around the interior, you got a lovely feel. Tip won't like this steering wheel because you'll say it's not completely round, but who cares? You're, typically, you're holding the steering wheel like this, or you should be holding the steering wheel like this, so this doesn't come into play certainly that often. Seats are lovely. I thought there'd be a little bit more padding being a sort of GT car, but uh, uh, they are very beautiful, covered in Alcantara everywhere, as far as the eye can see. You've got these haptic feedback buttons that I'm not a massive fan of, but the position, and it's all about the driver really, the position of the driver is really special. You feel at one with the car. And it's hard to believe that this car has got two seats in the back as well. Just fire it up a bit now. That's more like it. Let's go into a bit of sport mode. Opens up the exhaust. Once you start going up and down through the gearbox, you just can't help but grin. I can feel every ripple of the road, but I like that feel. I'm going slow with the noise, but I'm going fast. I love it. I love to know what the front and rear are doing. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. I want to drive a McLaren every day. This is so light, nimble, manoeuvrable. I fear my time is going to be too soon up, but I'll have to get into that thing, Aston Martin. Will it put as big a smile on my face? I really don't know. Then you're going to take me out for a posh lunch. What are you complaining about? You've got the signature yeah, burger and large it. fries. Actually, they're all quite nice. Uh, but funny enough, <laughs> you'll get this, they always talk about a Big Mac, whereas that McLaren actually feels like a small <laughs> Mac. It's amazing. You feel like you're inside a goldfish bowl. It's a wonderful thing to follow you. you I'm like I'm following a great giant. No, it's got lots of presents, this DBS. That looked great on the road, I have to say. So first impressions, have you enjoyed, forget that for the minute, have you enjoyed Enjoyed it, I've loved it. I loved every single mile of this car. Cinnabar orange. I think it looks wonderful. Especially cinema, cinema. Cinnabar orange. Oh, especially um, this, this is a Zor's. Zor's orange. Oh, look, the chips. Oh, look, the wing. Can you change the <laughs> angle of the wing? Look, it's slightly we need, we need some more aero on that wing. Both cars look great. Yeah. Very I different. Was, I know. But well, now I need to get into the Ashton. Now I've got the feel of the McLaren, which everyone thinks is, you know, one of the finest sports cars in the world, which I agree with. Firmer than I thought. People always talk about soft ride control, but absolutely love driving it. Well, I'm looking forward to getting in it, especially because where I'm taking you now, I might get a chance to drive this properly. It's a nice dinner tonight, I'm sure. Yeah, yeah I got dinner, dinner sorted. Don't worry about McDonald's. Dinner sorted for tonight. Okay. Have you got the keys? Oh yeah. Keyless go on that one. Have I got keyless go? Yeah. Oh, lovely, wonderful. Thanks. Well, oh, you can clean that up. <laughs> Quick swap and a completely different car. <laughs> Just cruising along, I'm definitely more in a luxury GT now than a rorty sports car. What I'm really interested to know is what they'll be like out on the open roads. A very simple dashboard compared with the great fuss and information mass attack from the McLaren. And I just got my direction of travel southeast. Always good to go south. Unfortunately, the interior design department has been let loose on the steering wheel and we've got some sort of octagonal thing here. 
I know I go on about it, and my campaign for round steering wheels is sadly falling on deaf ears, but it just seems so normal to me. You've got this wonderful McLaren visibility where the low scuttle here on the windscreen is just is phenomenal. You can just pretty much see everything. It's uh, very, very impressive. And Tiff was saying that the ride is really hard, but it's a sports car. I know it's got quite a lot of GT influence in this car in terms of the ride, but I'm in comfort mode now. It feels, it feels fine. Maybe he is getting old. As with the McLaren, there are three modes for powertrain and handling. We set on two little dials, they're on two little buttons. So over here I've got my powertrain. I can go from GT to Sport to Sport Plus. And over the left-hand side, that's the handling. I've got GT damping, I've got Sport Plus damping. And once you're plus and plus, the rev counter goes red. As if to say, let's get on with it. Well, why not? Oh. Holy moly! Blimey, that's fast. I forgot how fast these cars were. Not to 60 miles an hour in just 2.8 seconds, not to 100 miles an hour, that's 160 kilometers an hour, in 5.5 seconds. It is mind blowing how fast this car is. Really incredible. Honestly, this car makes you feel like you're the best driver in the world. <laughs> It's pushing hard in the DBS and it's just easy to stay with him in this car. Let's see what this big looking car feels like through some corners. Amazing turn, the initial response to that steering, the nose goes in. Tell me what it corners flat, there's not too much body roll. And I'm still in soft settings, let's get harder on the settings, let's go full race mode. Pick up the throttle, traction control working underneath me. Oh, this is impressive. Despite their apparent similarities, these cars really are very different. I love the sound of that wailing, cackling V12 rippling out the exhaust at the back. Visibility-wise, though, this is more, so much more claustrophobic than that wide-open view from the McLaren. Comfort-wise, though, this seat holds me better. This is. Definitely a, a more comfortable long distance cruiser, I'd have to say. The, the handling is just incredible. It's, just, it's like a go kart. Wherever you point the car, it just goes. And if you do get out of position a little bit, it's so easy to correct yourself. Brakes are fantastic. You've got this big air brake that comes up behind you as well. So they say that the McLaren is too good now. They say it hasn't got any soul. They say it's not engaging with the driver. You drive this car on these roads and it could be further from the truth. You feel very connected with the car and you feel like it's got a lot of excitement. Great steering feel, I mean, that's, again, the car just doesn't feel like a heavy car. That is really is the overriding feeling and not in a big car. So it is a sports car, but then compared to the McLaren, it's more of a grand touring sports car. It's a bit more comfort and luxury. Both though just bring a huge smile to my face. You know, for a day like this, I don't think there are many better cars than this to be driving for the day. What a lot of excitement. What a stupidly fast car. What a lot of fun. Paul? Yes, Tiff? Are you taking me where I think you're taking me? I, I, I apologize for criticizing the luncheon budget, Paul, because there's laps of Goodwood are my favourite laps. And in these two cars, that should be brilliant. Have you arranged it all specially for us? <laughs> well, I haven't booked per se, oh. but I'm sure if we just turn up in these nice cars, then let's come. Hang on, I need to knock it in neutral. We're going through the tunnel, hang on. That's just childish, that is just childish. <laughs> it's good fun though, isn't it? Well, it looks good. There's not many people around. Well, the gate's open. It's looking good. It's closed. You haven't booked it, and we're not going to go around Goodwood at all, are we? Don't blame me. We're going to have a cup of coffee. You can buy me a cup of coffee. 
Hey Paul, look, there's one of those new Bentley Continental GTs. Isn't that also really competitive for this DBS? I guess it is. You got that's an outright GT, British, and not far off the same price as this. Oh, wait a minute. You never guess who's driving it. It's Lady Annabelle. <laughs> Hello, Ted. Annabelle, what are you doing here with that lovely looking machine? Um, do you think we might borrow it for a while? You may. Well, this is very kind of you, Annabelle. You don't mind if we just pop up the road and back? Just because we've been comparing the new DBS with the McLaren, but then we suddenly thought that this is also competitive. Do you think, Paul? Well, I mean, Definitely. Big British sports car, GT car. Yes. All new Bentley. Yeah. Same sort of price. A little bit, little bit less expensive yeah. than the uh, others. In fact, I'm So is this yours, Lady Annabelle? It is now. <laughs> <laughs> How much, so I'm getting through the cost of the McLaren we got there and the new DBS, so how much money? Okay, the McLaren is about 200, starts at about 218 grand. The one we got has got is about 240 grand. Ooh, why has it got extras then? Yeah, a few little bits and pieces, uh, like there's special paints and stuff. The DBS starts at around 225,000, and again, ours has got about 20, 25,000 pounds worth of extras. So they're both 240 ish. Yeah, well, on the road price, about 220, 225. So very and when similar. we talk about these now, obviously, Lady Annabelle, to you, these are just small oh, this is, numbers. This is, 200, 200. Anyway. We'll have more than that in a purse. But we have to remember, you. these are incredible 200. Th anyway, <laughs> we, we talk about oh, 200, 220, 240, as though it's like well, loose like change. Two, two, 201, I think this will stand Well, it's at. not. On the road price, it's actually 159, so it's right. considerably less. Yes. 201 with the extras, with but the this end. is absolutely rammed back with extras. But you still get a pretty phenomenal So you can car, get the entry level now, the GT for what? 159,000. So really? The DBS sits in the middle of the two. Smack bang in the middle, middle, really. It really does sit. So the, the, the DBS's only real competitor is the 812 Superfast. Except the 812 Superfast isn't a two plus two. It's, it's just a two straight two seater. Yeah. It's so a that's not comparable either. Well, I think it is in a bit of a class of its own. Yes. But as our styling guru now, Annabelle, I mean, what, what do you? Believe is these three. Which do you think is the oh, most handsome? Have you, have you most, seen that DBS? Much? Yeah, I think this is probably the most handsome. Ooh, ooh, um, I think the DBS is very pretty, and the McLaren was. Oh, pretty, DBS no, pretty, use pretty wow. with DBS. No, me neither. I well, there you go. I, I think, think it looks aggressive. Yeah, because yeah. I, I actually wanted it to be a prettier, a bit more graceful. My DBS. It's quite an aggressive style car. And she is a lot younger than us, <laughs> and much more with it than us. So <laughs> I think that McLaren is very pretty. Mm, so this yeah. Bentley I'd call handsome. Mm. And then I'm a bit strapped with the PBS <laughs> where I go. Stylish. Pretty, handsome, Debonair. impactful. <laughs> oh shit, wasn't it? 3.6 seconds. <laughs> wow. So Paul, if we can't drive around Goodwood, where are we going to go to next? Funny you should mention that, we're going to the Riviera. Oh, Three good cars to take. I love a real road trip. <laughs> That's what it's all about. Can we take Annabelle? I think so. Would you like to join us, Lady I Annabelle? I would love to come. Lady wow. Annabelle. <laughs> I think it's very fitting that this Bentley comes along. Best of British. We're going to have a British dinner at the Riviera. <laughs> okay, sound good, Annabelle? Can't wait. Let's go. Here we are. Here we are. He's going to love this so much. Where is he off to now? What? What? Paul, just no. Paul, no. I can't believe it's closed. Y you're lucky it's closed. Goodwood's closed. You said the women Riviera anyway. This is the Riviera. It's the English Riviera. What do you oh. think? The south of France or something? That was sort of what I was thinking of, yes. <laughs> Much as I love Little Hampton, A, it's closed, and B, it's for 16-year-olds. Have you got any better ideas? Did you say 16 or 60-year-olds? Because it looks pretty old here, but... Yeah, I've got one more idea up my sleeve, so follow me. What an amazing road trip. British road trip with three amazing British cars, actually. Yes. But were they? 
It might be lovely in the summer, it's hot, but it's not nice in November, all right? Holy moaning. It's not just about the destination, it's about the journey, how you get all here. Right. And right. we got here in some style, let's be fair. And two fabulous cars, both gorgeous, but one still sort of a GT trying to be a sports car, and the other a sports car trying to be a GT. <laughs> so neither was really perfect at doing both. Well, you had one that was the outright GT, which is Annabelle's. Thank you for coming. <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> really, lovely. Really appreciate that. But the two cars that we really sort of focused on yeah. today, driving thoughts on the DBS? And I, and I don't think that was nice of the Bentley, because I don't think it pulled me away from either of those two, to be honest. Oh, that it's Bentley looks... Big, yeah, that was a very cruiser, stunning not, car. Yes, but not quick enough. But I think if you had the McLaren for a week or two and learnt how to operate all those menus then I'll be much happier. I think it's, it's hard jumping in a car nowadays because they're so complex. Well, I think that therein lies the problem. We have the pleasure of driving these cars, but typically only for a day or yeah. a couple of days. So to get used to them more, the DBS is super oh, comfortable. A ple pleasure to be in. Hold me around the waist. So Deep. which one are you taking home? Well, it depends what I'm, what I'm, I'm Maybe I am, you know, more moving into a slightly mature age of life. <laughs> <laughs> and that outright sports car, whilst I just love that for a day at the track and mm. for a quick short blast. Mm. If I'm going on a grand cruise, I'm taking the Aston any day. Annabelle, you can join our uh, conversation. <laughs> Sorry we left you out a little bit here. Fine. I'd 720 for me. Yeah. I'd, I'd, I like them. I like and I've got to say, it'll be a tough choice for both because mm. it, it depends on what it's going to be. If one car, but DBS. Annabelle, just going back to that, I know you're jumping to the plane initially, but should we be going to the Riviera? Would you really want to sit in that McLaren for like eight Probably hours? Probably not, no. With no. the noise, a lot of noise, a lot of wind noise, a lot of chassis well, noise. I didn't notice any noise. wind noise at all. There's a bit of road noise, as you'd well, imagine, big tires, but <laughs> look at the positives. The McLaren, the visibility, that low scuttle, incredible. You don't feel like you're in a Marvel. supercar. It's a supercar with a hypercar performance as well. The performance is absolutely Wrong. nuts on that. Well, you can have the McLaren. I'll take the Aston Martin. And um, Lady Annabelle can go home in her Bentley. <laughs> and okay. that's enough of these chips. I've <laughs> enough oh, of these that. chips now. Is there a better food? <laughs> Before we go to the b and is there a restaurant on the way? Another, another Indian restaurant. <laughs> An Indian? That? A curry. I mean, your food you buy me is just rough. Every time you promise we're going to